Since ChatGPT came out in November, we've all been amazed at its capabilities. Other models like Claude and Bard have followed, and they actually exceed ChatGPT's capabilities in some use cases. But this week in Google's Q2 earnings call, there was a lot of discussion about Surge and AI, and some important hints about what the future might look like. But there are increasing signs that Google is working on something truly next level in this area. And today we're gonna to be looking through what we know so far. In Google's earnings call this week, there was a lot of discussion about search and AI. And search is a key battleground for Google because it's where it makes most of its money. Now Google's current generative AI powered search engine, which isn't even technically out yet, is called SGE, Search Generative Experience. But to be honest, it's a bit of rubbish. It openly takes content from other websites without attributing where those ideas came from. It doesn't even link through to some of the websites it's linking to. And it can hallucinate and give questionable advice. Even more dangerous considering this advice seems to be coming from Google, which is a very trusted source. So some people have said, well, if this is the future of AI search, no thanks. But as I'll be showing you, Google has way bigger plans for AI and search, namely Gemini. So what is Gemini? What can we expect? And when is it going to be here? Well, to be honest, Gemini looks to be unlike anything that we've seen before. For one thing, Google is building Gemini to be multimodal, which means that whereas with ChatGPT and other tools, you type in a question and it types back an answer, with a multimodal large language model, you're able to put in other types of inputs and get images, videos, and voice as your answer. Now, Google's CEO actually says this is gonna enable them to reimagine search. Advances provide an opportunity to reimagine our most important product, search. But what could reimagining search really look like? Well, Sundar references something called Universal Search, which was an initiative rolled out by Google in 2007. Prior to Universal Search, when you searched on Google, you would just see a list of websites. Now, of course, we know that when we search on Google, we see all sorts of search results. We see images, videos, news, pictures, local results. For example, look at this search results page. We've got an ad, we've got weather, we've got alternative searches, we've got news, we've got websites, we've got questions, we've got videos, we've got images and related searches. And it's clear that Sundar expects Gemini's multimodal capabilities to take the search results page to the next level. Google is putting some huge resource behind Gemini, including bringing one of the co-founders, Sergey Brin, back to work on Gemini. Head of Google's AI division, Google DeepMind, Demis Hassabis, is leading it. We'll come back to him later on. If you want to be kept up to date with the latest goings on in the world of AI, subscribe to the Powered by AI newsletter at pbai.co. This newsletter is optimized for people in business and doesn't flood you with every single AI update. It just shares the most important stuff for people in business. So go to pbai.co to sign up today. Okay, cool. So they're building this kind of multimodal large language model. It's probably going to be better than ChatGPT, but how? Well, to look at that, let's look at some of the history of the team building it. Google DeepMind. Even if Black can live there. Oh, it's done. he resigned. It's done. Okay. Now, DeepMind became very well known for building an AI program called AlphaGo, which learned the ancient Chinese board game Go. Now, Go is such a complex game with so many potential moves that many researchers assumed it would always be out of the reach of AI. But DeepMind proved them wrong, and AlphaGo beat the world champion Go player in 2016. But what made AlphaGo so good was a technique called reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is about using repeated attempts to solve something, getting feedback each time. In a game like Go, the feedback is in winning or losing. Each move, you're either increasing your chances of winning or decreasing your chances of winning. In AlphaGo's case, reinforcement learning combined with something called advanced tree search meant that it could watch humans playing Go to understand the basics. Learning which types of moves increased its likelihood of winning. AlphaGo beat world champion Go player Lee Sedol, who said at the end, I thought AlphaGo was based on probability calculation and that it was merely a machine. But when I saw this move, I changed my mind. Surely AlphaGo is creative. Now the move that he's referencing was a highly unusual and very creative move that very few human players would have made. And that's when it became obvious that there was something different going on here. But DeepMind didn't stop there. They then developed AlphaZero, which took that same approach, but worked across chess, shoggy, and go, all from scratch, all with zero human involvement. And again, it beat the world leading computers in each of these games. And again, 
Throughout, it came up with new, novel, and creative ways to win these games, which surprised the human observers. World chess champion Gary Kasparov said, I can't disguise my satisfaction, it plays with a very dynamic style, much like my own. Well, yes Gary, but your skills took a lifetime to develop and AlphaZero mastered it in a matter of days. <laughs> Curious to see how resilient your business is going to be to the oncoming wave of AI? Well take the Powered by AI, How Screwed Are You test. All you need to do is go to pbai.co and click the button to take the test. You'll find out how likely your business is to be disrupted by AI, but also what sort of opportunities might be available to you if you embrace it. Go to pbai.co. All right, so what does any of this have to do with Gemini? Well, in Gemini, DeepMind is combining some of the capabilities of large language models like BARD and ChatGPT with some of this amazing problem solving and creativity. And remember reinforcement learning that was key to AlphaGo being able to play Go against itself to develop new moves and understand how to win? Well, all large language models use reinforcement learning, but often reinforcement learning from human feedback. For example, when training ChatGPT, OpenAI gives ChatGPT answers to human evaluators. They then rate these answers based on usefulness, and this helps them to tune ChatGPT's responses to be most useful to humans. But as DeepMind discovered when building AlphaGo, the real capability acceleration came when they removed the humans and just let the machine play against itself. By removing the need for human feedback, just giving the model the rules of the game, it was able to simulate many more games and come up with many more iterations and versions of each move. And in this wide article, Hasabis seems to indicate that that is the route that Google is going with Gemini. Now it's this ability to combine the amazing capabilities of large language models with some of the creativity and the ability to find novel solutions to problems, which I think is so exciting and gives us a glimpse of what the future of AI might look like in search and beyond. In this wide article, it also suggests that the DeepMind team might combine some of their learnings from other areas of AI like robotics. This is wild. Imagine a model that not only learns from human created text, which is essentially a human based filter on what's happening in the world, but actually learns from the physical world itself and can go beyond the constraints of the human mind and learn from the known and unknown universe. But anyway, how if Google is really able to implement DeepMind's expertise in reinforcement learning and make it multimodal and get it working in search, it's no wonder that their CEO signed off this investor call with, I think it's gonna be an exciting couple of years ahead. All right, so how long till we see this rolling out? Is a couple of years the timeline? Well, I've got good news or bad news depending on where you sit on the old existential threat spectrum. Maybe sooner. According to the Wall Street Journal, DeepMind CEO Demis Asabis told an internal meeting at Google that this technology will be available later this year. That seems to be corroborated by this article in Wired, which says it'll take a number of months. So over to you. Excited? Scared? What do you think Gemini is going to be able to do? Let us know in the comments.